Ashley, to you, this question of who gets to speak, who gets to be heard, who gets to be taken seriously. You've got some extraordinary stories up your sleeve. Um, tell us the injustice story first. What brings you here? For sure. Um, so I think that I should start a little bit about where I'm from. So I'm from South Central Los Angeles, and um, as we all know that people in South LA are rising up um, because there are many injustices um, ranging from poverty, ranging from um, not having access to a quality education, and ranging, and also the criminalization of our community in a real way. So disinvestment, but putting police inside of our communities. Um, so coming from that background, I intentionally chose to go to an all-women's college. I went to Scripps College in Claremont. And I wanted to have those conversations around patriarchy, capitalism, um, poverty, <laughs> class. And um, I found myself really intrigued by everything that I was learning. Um, but I wanted to take those conversations further. I wanted to take action. So I found myself, um, now I'm a community organizer, <laughs> through a class that I took there. And I found myself back where I was from, in my neighborhood. And I was organizing on the buses. And just to give you all a little landscape of the buses, bus systems here in Los Angeles, it's comprised of 60% women. Uh, my majority of them are immigrant women. Um, the average or annual income for the women on the buses are $15,000 or less per year. Um, and the majority of the women on the bus are black, Latino, and API. So when I was on the bus, I would hear different stories from women talking about their long journeys, an hour, two hours it would take them to get from their neighborhoods to other neighborhoods like West, West LA, um, to downtown, to be domestic workers, to clean and work really hard. Um, but I think the stories that resonated most with me um, is when they're leaving work, and oftentimes it's after sunset, um, way after sunset, and they find themselves at the bus stop waiting 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes two hours, to find out that their bus isn't coming. Um, and their bus line has been cut, but let's be real, um, no one has informed them that that bus isn't coming. And so, although they're put in this predicament where they're waiting for these buses, you know, MTA, our metro, our metro system, um, also continues to increase the fares. They also cut, continue to cut the service um, in, in a, an attempt to create a world-class bus system. Um, but the question at hand is, what type of bus system is this? Who is it going to benefit, right? Is it going to benefit the women who, are make, who pay $75 a month? and having to choose, do I feed my kid or do I actually pay for my bus pass so I can get to work? Is it going to benefit um, the, the woman who is making very hard decisions about where am I going to live now? Because after, you know, rail is built in my neighborhood, gentrification is real, rent is high, so where am I supposed to go and live? So, when I think about all of these connecting, and if we want to talk about intersectionality, which I was definitely on when I was in college, um, if we want to talk about that, I think we have to broaden the idea of what is violence. Poverty is violence. Racism is violence. Patriarchal capitalism is violence. So I, I think that's one of the things that I really, what resonates with me with injustice. So to elaborate on that a little bit, what are the consequences for the women that you watched on the bus, for the women riding on the bus? So I think the consequences are very um, grave in the sense that sometimes women, they're walking, right? They have to walk home. And I'm, I don't know if you all know, but you know, walking home in LA, pretty much, it's kind of scary. Um, and you know, I think, uh, and I'll just speak from my own experience. Walking home when your bus does not come, um, I'm usually traditionally not afraid of the people inside of my neighborhood. But a real thing here in Los Angeles is we need to think about police. Um, I don't think that when police officers see um, women walking home, particularly black, Latino, and API communities, um, it's an issue of safety. I think that the thing that I know I think about is like when I see officers inside of my community, are they there 
um, to protect me or do they see me as a threat to safety? Um, and I think the latter is what most women experience. So, you know, I think that's one huge thing that, you know, women are facing. But another thing in which I, I probably shouldn't switch so quickly to this, but I think it's real anger. <laughs> and when you have that anger, it makes you rise up and it makes you fight. So <laughs> women, um, although experiencing these conditions, you either can be content with it or you can decide that you're gonna fight against mm -hmm. it. And you see it as something that's institutional, mm -hmm. right? You see the structures at hand and then you say, we all have something in common, these collective stories. Mm -hmm. And we need to join together and we fight back. And, th and that's why we have something like the Bus Riders Union and that's why we have organizers in the street because of these women. Mm -hmm. <laughs>